I'm back, back in sunny England and I'm loving it. I've been traveling around Southeast Asia for the last four months. I had a month of amazing holiday and then I've been working remotely ever since on the other side of the world on a different time zone. And there's been some massive highs and some incredible lows, but now I'm back on the tools today in the UK. I want to give you guys a big update about what is going on at Artisan, what are our plans for 2024 and what we've got lined up for you guys. So buckle up, sit down, grab a cup of tea and enjoy today's video. So this week is a big week for us. It's our first solar job of the year. We've got a new roofer on board who we're using for the first time and we've got the whole team on this job to get it done as quickly and efficiently as possible. And it's the first time we're installing a Give Energy all-in-one battery. So it's quite a lot to look forward to. I'm nervous and excited because I'm feeling a bit rusty on the tools, if I'm honest, but let's see how the week goes. Now you might be wondering, what is that weird green substance that you just downed, Jordan? That looks bizarre. Well, that is AG1, and that is today's video sponsor. One of the things that my, I have as set as a goal for myself this year is to get in the best shape of my life. Last year was a pretty good year for me in terms of exercise, but I kind of reached a plateau, and also I've put on a little bit of weight while I've been in Asia. So here's the plan of attack. Get fit by a routine of regular exercise, eat healthy and follow a daily nutrition routine. And that's where that green substance I just downed comes in. AG1 is a nutritional supplement that contains over 70 high quality ingredients that give my body all that it needs every day to cope with all the craziness that I put it through. Rather than taking a multitude of vitamin and mineral pills, which I used to do, now I just take AG1 every day. It's helped with my energy levels and focus. It contains a lot of B vitamins, which are really good for that. My immune system has been massively supported. I've also found that it's helped me with my stress levels and mental clarity with the powerful antioxidants that are inside it. AG1 have kindly sponsored today's video and they've given us a special link. So go to drinkag1.com slash artisan electrics to get your free one year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 and five free travel packs with your first order. So that's my first goal for 2024, but there are quite a few others that I want to talk to you about a bit later. Oh. Well, I've just stopped <laughs> to grab some uh, water and a salad. The first shocking revelation of the UK, which I'd forgotten about is how expensive everything is. I've sort of got used to having like dinner for two with two beers in Vietnam for like three quid and I just paid three quid for two bottles of water and a completely pathetic salad. Also, I've got used to driving scooters and stuff in Asia, you know, the roads are just crazy. There's no rules, there's no, you know, traffic laws, it's just a free for all. And now I've got to get used to being well behaved and driving on the British roads. And I've got to say, I did miss this little van. So I've got a story to tell you about this van uh, a bit later, but yeah, it's a lovely little van and it's quite nice to be back in it. Well, it is zero degrees and I've just come from Thailand where it was 30 degrees. This is quite a shock to the system. Did the old artisan defrost. Hit me up in the comments if you remember that. I'm completely jet lagged. Uh, so today it's going to be fun. And here we are, it's official. Back with the boys. Let's see, first. First uh, boss uh, van inspection. Oh, it's not the best, oh, I'll hold my hands up. Uh, it's well, not too bad. I'm not gonna, well, uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna comment. <laughs> oh, come on, it's just a little bit dusty. Oh, yeah, it's right. No, it's all right, it's a bit dusty, but it's pretty organized. Right, so let me talk you through the job. So, up on the roof, up here, I'll show you that in a minute. We've got 10 panels going in. Uh, in the garage here, our, our um, incognito roofer, is actually uh, putting the boards on the wall because we've got a Give Energy all-in-one uh, battery gonna be going there. As you know, we love putting uh, batteries and stuff in garages. This is a bit of a honky-tonky garage, but it's sort of only temporary. Customers gonna be having an extension later, and this will all be incorporated in that, but it's not gonna be for two or three years yet. So he wanted to get the system up and running now. So in the corner there, our, uh, our roofer slash handyman, who shall remain nameless, 
Let us know in the comments who you think it is and the funniest comment will get a bunch of stickers sent out to you, artisan stickers. We're boarding out the wall there with some OSB board and then some hardy backer so we've got a nice smooth surface. We've got a duct going down there which goes to the house so I'll show you that and Lee is currently in the middle of core drilling through the wall. Up on the roof we've got 10 panels which I'll show you that in a sec. So I'll go inside and show you guys what's happening in here. So in here Lee's just core drilling through the wall, 50 mil core drill. The reason is that we've got two 16 mil three core armoureds going out there because we're putting the backup gateway in the garage too. What's going to happen is we're going to relocate the tails that are going into this board. In fact, you guys might remember, I, I'll leave a card up here. Me, uh, Lee and Ruben, we did the EICR here. Um, but we didn't film the remedials, but this is the result. This is the one where we found the really dodgy socket. You ready to see some shonkiness unveiled? What is that? Yeah, that is the IR cable there. Those laths are just twisted together. Yeah. Goodness knows where that goes. But yeah, guys did a really nice job on the board. And now what we're going to do is put a switch fuse down here. We're going to go into the switch fuse with the, the tails, out of that to the garage, to the backup gateway and then back into the consumer unit so that the whole house is on the give energy backup system. And then we've got to also run a cable from the inverter to the garage, and we've got to run data out there as well. So there's quite a lot of cables to run in that duct. Meanwhile, we'll check in on Ruben and Luke and see how they're getting on. So we're up here in the loft and we are breaking my number one rule for solar, which is never install an inverter in the loft. How do you feel about that, Luke? Uh, <laughs> I'm just doing what I'm told. <laughs> hypocrite! You hypocrite! You heathen! Let me explain, right? We are in this beautiful loft, which has got loads of space, as you can see. It's huge. You've got a massive empty wall here. We've actually boarded the loft out. We are putting smoke alarms up here. So Ruben's busy with that now, just clipping the cables in. So we're gonna have a smoke alarm here interlinked with another smoke alarm down in the landing. We've got access for maintenance purposes by means of the loft ladder and it's all boarded out. We've got it on fireboard there. We've got smoke alarms. So in this case, I am perfectly happy to install the inverter in the loft. I still would not be fitting the batteries up here because it's too much weight potentially on this. But in this case, we're just putting in the inverter on the wall. This is what the customer wanted at the end of the day. So we said, okay, if we can find a way to do it safely, we'll do it. And that's what we've done. So yeah, I broke my number one rule on this one. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. So this is our first Give Energy all in one system. And we've got the Give Energy hybrid inverter here. The inverter can be used with separate batteries, but in this case, we're using the all in one. So it's just gonna be like a dumb inverter. And what we're gonna be doing is putting 10 panels on this roof here. So we're gonna have a deck type roof flashing through here where the DC cables go through. Then we're gonna go into a uh, DC surge protection device, out of that straight into the inverter. The reason is we've got a DC isolator on the inverter, so we don't need a separate DC isolator. And then the AC, we'll have an AC isolator here, AC cable going through there. Jobs are good and we're gonna drill through down there somewhere, pop out, clip the cable down and the AC cable from the inverter is actually going to go straight into the Give Energy backup gateway. So one of the cool things about this inverter is that it's actually just got like Vargo push fit connections so it makes it super easy to do connections. So got our four mil H07 flex that we're going to use to feed it. Four mil because that's standard regulation for solar even though it's only on a 20 amp breaker or whatever. Uh, and then we just clip those in there. We don't even need ferrules because they're, they're Vargo connectors. So you just click those up like that. And then that'll go straight in. So I've been absolutely dying to show off this Hilti ruler. As you know, I'm a massive fan of folding rulers and Hilti sent us this, which is just absolutely beautiful. It's um, Holterforce, like Swedish quality, but it's been rebranded Hilti, obviously. And I'm just using it now to make sure that I've got the right core length on these. So they should be 12 mil, according to the uh, manufacturer's instructions. You've got a little thing on the side here 
that says how short you should cut them. So I've just stripped them back with this to make sure that they're all nice, all the same length. What we've got here is a DC surge protection device. Now we fit these as standard because the single phase inverters don't usually have surge protection included. And that is a requirement now of the regulations. Basically, if you're fitting solely, you should be fitting surge, DC surge. So what we're gonna do is come off the roof with the DC cables into here. This connects in parallel. So we're just gonna have a little bridge link across into this. Then the earth will connect into the earth of the inverter and then the DC out will go into the inverter. And these are really nice because you've got these little nipply things here. So you just take the DC cables in like that and then you've got this cable clamp to clamp them down. It's no MC4s, it's just a Wago connector like this as well. Much easier than having to make off MC4s and less stuff to go wrong. Now we're not fitting a DC isolator because the DC isolator is actually built into the inverter here and the IET and multiple other people including insurers now recommend to avoid installing DC isolators where possible. Right so our hardy backer board and uh, OSB boards all mounted on now nice and neat and that just gives a nice fireproof surface for everything and a nice smooth uh, flat surface for everything to be mounted on. So our two 16 mil cables are going to come up here and then we're going to just run them along over and down into a trunking, which is gonna go across underneath the uh, backup gateway. And then the battery's gonna go down there, but I'll show you all that in a minute. Well, I brought some sun with me from Thailand, you see. You know what? It's chilly, but it's beautifully sunny out here. And the view is amazing. It's a clear blue sky. And as far as British winter weather goes, it's pretty much as good as it gets. So I am not complaining. Uh, up here with our uh, mystery roofer, and I've just been showing him uh, how we do things he's he's a very experienced roofer been doing it for decades uh but there are certain nuances to the way that we do things that you know uh not all roofers would necessarily do automatically so i've just been running through with him for example we use this deck tight roof flashing to run the dc cables through the roof uh, that's just a really nice and neat way of doing it and keeping the seal of the roof not allowing any insects to get in later and stuff so i've just been running through that with him We've marked everything up so we know roughly where everything's going to be going. We've got 10 panels to go on this roof, 415 watt, all black panels. We're going to be putting solar skirt all the way around it as well, so it'll look really nice and neat when it's done. There's another a roofing company who's just removed the chimney and they're just busy capping off the roof there. But the customer's just told us that he's got us all bacon sarnies. He stopped me for a little warm up. Lee's got his uh, heated lunch box. Oh yeah, check it out. Chicken rice. Is this tool of the day then? Yeah, we did it before. Oh, yeah. Does it? Is it from Amazon? Yeah. Yeah. Do you, does it have a battery, or you just literally plug it into no, just your? Plug it in. And then how long does it take to heat up? Twenty, 20 minutes. Then to wash it as well. You just pull that little tray oh, out yeah. of it, sir. Oh nice. And just wash that too. Cute. Cool. Okay, so Ruben's going to use these beasts. He's beast the cable cutters. Okay. <laughs> Just because we can. Okay. Yep. Oh wow. Like a knife through butter. Right, so a little update for you guys. So we are doing well down here. The cables are now through the wall. It was a bit of a headache because it's two 16 mil three core silver armoureds, one six mil three core EV Ultra and a data cable, but we managed to get them all through. Uh, so that is good. Uh, Luke has pulled the EV Ultra up through the wall up there and he's just clipping it to the inverter now and then he's gonna clip it down the wall here. Ruben's getting the data cable in for the give energy gateway which is going to go up into the customer's data socket there um we've not really made a start on this end so i think this end we're going to basically do uh tomorrow get the give energy battery mounted on the wall although we might get it unpackaged today and at least yeah. we can get it inside in the safety of the inside let's see how lee's getting on so here is the switch fuse 
Um, and basically what's going to happen is these tails are going to go, they're going to pull out of there, go into the switch fuse. So Lee's already got a set of tails ready to go. So we can hop into that isolator there. Uh, and then essentially what's going to happen is out of the switch fuse goes into the backup gateway and then back from the backup gateway, this armoured here goes into the consumer unit so that the whole board is fed from the backup gateway. We've got an earth electrode as well that we've put in already over at the garage. So around here, uh, we've dug in a conduit disc down here and we just put some flexible conduit over the wire so that we can run that into the garage, the give energy gate, uh, battery and gateway going in that corner. So we're gonna have to drill through into the garage and then just clip it along in some flexicon or something inside the garage. But that is all done and dusted. And you might remember we had a lot of dodgy goings on and uh, the guys have done well in fixing it and doing a lot of remedials. So these are the roof hooks that our nameless roofer has very nicely put in. So he's done quite a few and he's just working his way up now either side of the ladder. We've got two rows of five panels here in portrait. He's just got to do basically all the lines of hooks. We're using these hook stops which we've never used before but they are pretty clever because it means that when you tread on the rail you don't break the tile underneath because the weight sometimes can crack the tile underneath so these are just like a rubber tile which just avoids that from happening well i'm just doing these mc4 connectors positive and negative for the string we've just got one string of panels here so it's pretty straightforward and i must say it's quite nice to be back with everyone i was a little bit apprehensive but it's like a duck to water really Good morning, it's a new day, it's 4.30 a.m. and the jet lag is definitely taking its toll. In my head, it's like one o'clock in the afternoon, so it's I'm quite awake now. I'm just having a little coffee and catching up on some paperwork. I talked about my personal fitness and, and getting in the best shape of my life, but my second personal goal this year, which also ties in with business, is actually to do more education and training for myself. I feel like the last year or so, I've been so focused on kind of output that I've not focused so much on input. In other words, like, you know, improving myself. So I've got a couple of courses I'm doing this year. One is related to YouTube, another one's related to presenting and you know how I present because that's a big part of the business is how I present on camera and just being more confident in general yeah that's something that I'm working on personally and I'll talk to you about business goals when we're back on site because I've got some really big business goals for this year in terms of the work that we're getting done but I'm super happy with how the job went yesterday let me show you how we got on and we are here for day two of this project and it's even colder than it was yesterday. We've got a nice warm coffee thanks to our lovely customer. He's really looking, looked after us on this job so far. Bacon sarnies and everything. You might remember this is a customer that le left us a whole care package of snacks when we came here to do the first job. And since then we've done loads of other work here. This is like the cherry on the cake really for this job, getting the solar done. Let me show you how we got on yesterday. So Lee did a lot of prep work in here yesterday and it's looking really good. So we've got the armoured terminated into the switch fuse here now um, going out to the garage and then the one coming back in is all pre-terminated so like this all glanded up ready to go i was a bit worried about how much space we'd have in that duct but we managed to get all the cables through there we've got our six mil ev ultra cable which we've run up to the loft so i'll show you how it's looking up there here we are in the loft where we've got our give energy inverter and Luke has neatly wired everything in. We've got our DC cables coming in there, all nice and labeled up. We're looking pretty good up here, so, hey. <laughs> yeah, I was just taking credit for all Luke's work. So as I said, what okay, I did. So here's what I did yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> I did actually give you credit, by the way. <laughs> Obviously, this is not a solar edge system, so it's going to be you know live as soon as the panels are connected uh potentially quite a high dc voltage so what we have to do is prep everything this side and then we connect the panels last so that everything goes live when it's all safe here and there's no loose cables or live dc cables but yeah these guys have just rocked up with the bits that we need to finish off the roof so let's go up there and have a look so up here on the roof we've managed to get three of the rails in we've just got one more to do up at the top 
all the hooks are in and our DC cables are out here with the MC4 connectors which I put on at the end of the day yesterday. Our unknown roofer is going to just finish off that last rail and then we're going to start getting panels up onto the roof and I'm just going to go down and check in with Lee now who is mounting the Give Energy all in one battery on the wall. So we're here in the garage and uh, we've got our Give Energy all in one battery system with the backup gateway. Now this is basically gonna enable our customer to harness the excess solar energy that they produce during the day when the sun's bright, but they're not necessarily using it all in the house. Instead of exporting it, they can store it in this battery and then overnight the battery will actually run the house so that they're drawing less power from the grid overnight. Now it's got whole home backup as well, so we're gonna fit a, a backup gateway for this, where essentially if there's a power cut, it will switch over and power the whole house off the battery. We are filming an in-depth install video on this. I'll leave a card up here when it's ready. So if you're interested in seeing step-by-step step how we install this, go check it out. And if you're a customer and you want a quote for something like this, then there'll be a link in the description below where you can get a quote. Step one. It's on the wall. So I'm just going to jump off now and start lifting the panels up onto the roof because our roofer is ready for us to do that. All hands on deck, get those panels up. So for safety, we use these lifting bags. So we've got a bag for like tools and materials and stuff. It's basically like a bucket. And then we've got a bag for the panels that just enables us to lift things up safely without chance of stuff falling out or breaking or us falling off a ladder. So it's a nice little touch, a little bit expensive, but when you're doing these day in day out, it's worth having the kind of good kit to protect yourself and do things properly. We must've got the one for the dolphin and not the whale. <laughs> <laughs> Artisan Electric, saving whales every day. We should do that instead of planting trees. It should be like, saving. when you pay your invoice, we will save one whale. I brought snacks from the uh, snacks from Thailand for the team. Crispy cashew nuts with coconut flakes, dried mango, and dehydrated ginger. That sounds like Ed Sheeran when he's not had enough water to drink. Ooh, right on that. That's what a dehydrated ginger looks like. Not bad. 13 grams of sugar per 20 grams. Oh my goodness. But it's, it's fruit, it's healthy. All right, so I made a bit of a mistake here um, because I assumed that a DC isolator was not necessary because of the fact that we've got an isolator here, which is a DC isolator built in to the inverter. And these DC cables are just on a, a plug. Um, and the whole debate about, no, you shouldn't be using DC isolators unless they're absolutely necessary. With Solar Edge, we stopped using them now. Um, so I thought it would be the same with this. However, double check the instructions and a DC isolator is necessary. And I think the reason for it is because if you were to swap this inverter for a different type, obviously there's no MC4s here. It's just a, 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 a Vargo thing. So it means that if you wanted to swap to a different inverter, you'd have to put MC4s on the end of these. You'd have live ends while, while in daylight. Um, so, sorry Luke, you're gonna have to fit a DC isolator, which we do have one and it's, it's easy to fit, so it's, it's no problem. But what we're gonna do while, we're, while we've got the panels plugged in just to, is just check the voltage. We do have 494 volts. That should be 10 times 49 volts, which is the, the panel voltage. So that's absolutely fine. The only thing I'm not sure about, it looks like our polarity's wrong somehow. How would that have happened? Wrong MC4 on the wrong I put the positive angle. MC4 on the red. And Doesn't I, it go backwards though? Because you put it on the negative because then it's a ring. Oh. It comes back out. <laughs> that's right, I can swap them over this side. Sorry Luke, really. I have. <laughs> I've, been, I've been off the tools for too long. It's time for me to give up and go back to the office where I belong. At least we've got the right voltage, so we just need to flip that polarity. But that's the whole point of doing this voltage test, is to check the polarity. So that's great. We're going to unplug those MT4s on the roof now so that there's no DC voltage. Luke can fit the isolator and just uh, swap that round and then we're all good. This reminds me of my childhood. Have you ever been in a Waltzer? Uh, 
Yeah, probably. I mean, they were so... Like, they just killed your, your back. The customer got this, I think, for his wedding to do, like, a little photo booth in it. Right, Ruben. What's your lunch game today? What are you eating? Well, I, I'm, I'm on the healthy lunches now. After all those pad ties, I'm, I'm ready for some salad. So I've got a nice uh, boiled egg, ham, avocado, cheese, tomato, nuts salad with a nice a vinaigrette to um, top it all off. Four eggs? Four. Um, well, you know, Again, bloke protein. like me, <laughs> some, something's got to feed these muscles. So I want to talk to you guys about something because a couple of weeks ago I made that video about the mistake that I made, you know, and I said to you earlier I'm going to talk about our plans for 2024 and part of that is just like avoiding making more mistakes that I've made in the past. So I'll talk to you a bit more about the plan for Artisan for 2024 and what we've got coming up. But I just wanted to thank you guys, first of all, for the support that I had off the back of that video because so many of you left really supportive comments, which I really appreciated and the team really appreciated. Because like I said, we had quite a lot of, uh, a lot of people saying nasty things and being a bit rough with us. And, you know, it's been a hard time for the company. We've had so many ups and downs. We did have to make redundancies a few months ago because things were really, um, we were struggling financially. We've got through that now, but we still got to really ramp things up in terms of the output, in terms of the work. And this project is kind of a bit of a pilot project for what we're planning later on in the year. The plan is really to do a lot more of this kind of work, a lot more renewables work, and that's really where we're focusing our efforts. Solar, battery storage, EV chargers, those are gonna be our bread and butter. And we're aiming by 1st of April to be doing one a week of these kind of installs. And in between doing battery storage, EV chargers, and a bit of the normal electrical work that we do still as well. So that's the plan because that is our road to profitability, basically. These kind of jobs are a bit more profitable than normal work because there's more materials involved. And also it's just nice to be in one place for a little while and get stuck into something a bit more meaty rather than all these little bitty jobs. So that's part of the plan for 2024. But in terms of content as well, we've got some interesting plans. So I'll talk to you a little bit about that. But why am I standing in front of the caddy? I said to you guys earlier when I was driving this, I love this little van. But this is part of the struggles that we've had is that obviously we've lost one electrician, but of course, it's like the worst possible time to sell vans. So it's on the market at the moment, but we've not had any takers so far. I'll leave a link below where you can find the listing for this van. It is an amazing van. It's like it's got all the bells and whistles, automatic, so nice to drive and I'm loving it. So I get to use it for these couple of weeks while I'm back here in Cambridge. So that's fine. I mean, I'd love to keep it, but it's probably not worth it right now for us. And I'm more leaning towards leasing vans in the future rather than buying again. So there was this uh, roofer that was here, not our roofer, but the customer had a roofer here just doing the chimney stuff. And this roofer was just telling me a little bit about his business, which is like nice, I like to chat to people. And he was telling me that he's just started up on his own in the last sort of six, seven months. And he's really finding it hard with the whole paperwork, you know, work weekends, evenings, doing the paperwork while he's on the tools during the day. And of course my heart went out to him because I've been there myself. I know the struggles. So I recommend a trade fight to him for people like him or like sole traders or small businesses, even up to multiple employees. It's just such a massive time saving thing and it helps you to get organized. So it's a job management platform for tradespeople, including electricians, we, but we know plumbers who use it, roofers who use it, our scaffolders use it. And the idea is just have one platform online where you can send your invoices, send quotes, contact your customers. Now you can even do like certificates and stuff on there. It's really a great, great tool. Um, so thanks to Trade5 for sponsoring this video. And if you want, you can get 50% off your first three months using our special code, which I recommended to the roofer and he was very thankful. This van is awesome because you can just do pack outs and you've got like your racking basically. And then you've got the drawers in here where you can store loads of stuff as well. So like cable, etc. This is a Sortimo 
racking system, which I originally got my first van racked out with sort of mo racking by white box who do really good, good van racking stuff. So yeah, it's a lovely little van with our custom led lights that we got put in and everything. I'm kind of hesitant to sell it still really. So I'm hoping that if things go well enough over the next few months that I can actually take it off the market again. Oh, by the way, these boots, right? The roofer, he was asking me about these. These are the best boots in the world. They are so comfortable. And uh, he was asking me if they're any good and I showed him, you know, our whole team use these. They're just fantastic, such good quality. You can unzip them like that. Just pull them off if you're in customers' houses and they just look really smart as well. They've got really good grips, full safety, etc. So if you wanna find out more about these, you can get a 10% discount using our special code below as well, um, which I gave to the roofer. He learned a few things from the Artisan team this week. But yeah, I wanted to talk to you about last year because um, for those of you who are channel members, you will know, I vlogged every single week of my life last year. Like literally, I filmed every working day of my life and I put it on YouTube. There's about 50 videos on the members page at the moment. So I filmed every single week of my life behind the scenes running the business and I got to the end of 2023 and I was quite proud about that achievement. You know, it's pretty cool, but it was also pretty exhausting. Um, so I've decided that for 2024, I'm not gonna do the members behind the scenes vlogs every week, but I'm still gonna do videos like this where there's like major updates to give you guys, or I think it's really interesting week and I wanna share it with you guys. Um, you'll get to see that still. And you channel members will know how stressful it was for me the last few months seeing everything that's going on behind the scenes. So if you are curious and you wanna join up as a channel member, you can see all those videos. It's, it's quite cool for me to have a record of the whole thing. Like I can actually look back on the last year of my life now and watch every single week pretty much what I got up to. So it, it was more like a personal project if anything, just to, to do that. And I feel like it's a good accomplishment that I managed to do it. Anyway, let's see how the guys are getting on. And we've got panels, 10 panels on the roof, solar skirts going on. Uh, we've got a little bit of finishing off to do on that side. Just cut those rails off, put the solar skirt all the way round. But we're getting there now and it's uh, quarter past one. So a couple of hours left of sort of daylight to get a few little finishing touches done. But I think we'll have the majority of this work finished by the end of the day. And then tomorrow it's just commissioning. Really pleased with how it's going. It's looking awesome. Really uh, proud of the team and everything. So I've got to shoot off now because I've got an appointment to go to. I'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning. It's a new day and I'm at the office to drop off some snacks for the team. Man, it's been a while. Not been in here for four months. Let's have a little look, see if they've kept it tidy or not. Hmm. Not bad actually, it's definitely better condition than when I used to be here. Here's my little old desk, which is now Erica's desk. If you guys don't remember, this is our artisan office. This is where all the magic happens from the admin side of things. I've got a whole bag of goodies. And they can discover it all when they arrive. Nice little surprise for them. I've got to hit the road because I'm heading to a site visit in Chelmsford this morning for a solar survey before I head back to that site. Let's hit the road. Right, well that was an interesting site survey because it was a nursery school and it's a single story, it's got a metal standing seam roof. We can fit loads of panels on it and it looks like it's going to be a fairly easy install. So now I'm back at the office. I'm going to go and see Harvey, grab the schematic drawing for this solar job that we're working on and then head up and join the guys and see how they're getting on. So, back here at site, the guys are getting on well. We've decided to lend a helping hand. So this is the crazy hilty shooting gun that we've got. Um, it has these nails in it, and I'm gonna try and use it to shoot these clips uh, to this concrete, because it's gonna be difficult to drill and plug it. I mean, obviously it's possible, but it'll just take a lot longer. Have a go at doing one about here. Whoa! <laughs> okay. <laughs> It just literally obliterated the... Uh... Oh, wow. 
Okay. It obliterated the clip, but the nail is still in good condition. So I might try using these. Oh man. <laughs> Too loosey goosey, unfortunately. So I have to go back to old school methods, I think. These clips are the most rubbish flexible conduit clips I've ever seen. There's a little bit here, and that's supposed to snap down and clip into it. However, they just break off instantly. Like they're so brittle. It's a bit like that that goes on there, but it just keeps snapping off. So I'm going reverting to D lines. I wanted to talk to you guys about content. You know, we've got a lot of goals this year. We've talked about quite a few of them, but one of the goals as well this year is to level up our content, really. I feel like, due to various factors, the content hasn't been as good as we would have liked to have been in the last year or so. Part of that is because I've been focused on a lot on kind of behind the scenes stuff with the business, but I've decided this year I'm gonna try and get back on the tools a bit more like this and just do some really in-depth electrical content like I used to do. I've, I've been looking back, in fact, the whole team behind the camera, we've all been looking back at some of the old artisan videos that we made and some of the ones that went down really well, like the consumer unit video that I made was like really in-depth, how I change a consumer unit. That's had like three, 400,000 views now, you know, and just keeps ticking over. Um, and I think we got focused on like trying to get people to click on the new video and, and get in that initial surge of views rather than necessarily getting like long-term views. So what we're gonna try and do this year is find the perfect balance. We're gonna put a lot more planning into the videos so that every video has really got a lot of value in it for people who watch it. So it's worth watching as soon as you see the notification, but long-term it will provide value to people as well by the kind of interesting educational stuff that's inside it. But we're not just gonna make boring dry videos because that's not what we do. We're gonna make superb quality, enjoyable to watch and educating videos. That's the goal anyway. So we've got a whole list of video ideas. But let me know in the comments if there's anything in particular that you'd really like to see this year. We're gonna try and make videos that you want to watch. As electricians, we need so many different tools. It's ridiculous. And, and little bits and pieces. So this is a 16 mil earth coming off the uh, conju disc. So I've got to extend this because it only comes with like a five meter tail and we've got to extend it to the board there. So I've got a bit to extend it with, but I need this crimp. I need the crimping tool, I need cutters, I need some glue. <laughs> it's just so many tools that you need just for a, a tiny little job like this, you know? And um, let me know, you know in the comments, if you're not an electrician, if you're like a plumber or something like that, do you have the same thing? I feel like electricians have the biggest range of tools needed because we just work with so many different little fiddly things. And on a really cold day like this, the insulation of cables turns into like stainless steel or something. It becomes extremely hard to work with and cut and strip. But anyway, talking about tools, did you know we have another channel called Tools for Sparks um, and I haven't really posted much on it in the last year or so really but it's got a whole archive of like our favourite tools on there and reviews and stuff. And one of my goals for this year is to get more content on there. So next week, I've got a whole day booked in the studio where I'm gonna be shooting Tools for Sparks videos. Specifically, I'm gonna do like deep dive reviews on all of these different Hilti tools that we've got. Because so I figured like we've, we've shown them a little bit on the channel, but we've never really gone into depth about each individual tool and what its features are. And I wouldn't post that on the main channel here because I know that not everyone's really interested in tools. But for people who are, you're gonna get some in-depth, glorious tool content coming back to Tools for Sparks. So make sure you subscribe to that channel. Okay, so those are nicely jointed together now. I'm gonna get a little bit of heat shrink over that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, oh, that, oh. Might, that might just about be enough. Thanks for your sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> so last time we were at this property, I asked Ruben to rate the consumer unit that was here. We like to do this thing called neat or not neat, where we have a look inside the consumer units. And obviously since then, we've changed it. So Lee changed this board. So I'm gonna do a sneaky neat or not neat on Lee's board. And you guys can rate it out of 10 in the comments. Oh yeah, very, very neat. 
I would give it an eight out of 10. The only thing is slightly wavy wires, but I know why it's because like old wires are really hard to get straightened up. That's me being really picky. It looks awesome. And what I love is that, you know, you guys might think, oh, why have you got so much, such a big board? Why have you got so many spare ways? But it's future proofing because we know the customer is going to get an extension done later. There's going to be alterations and additions. We want this board to be here for a long time and to be able to be added to properly and neatly rather than them having to add a separate board later for something else and it just become a bit of a hodgepodge like it used to be. So. Well done, Lee. Good job. Well, what a first week it's been back on the tools. It's been really nice to be with the guys and this project has gone really well. I'm super happy. This is up. Just got a little bit of commissioning to do to get it finished off, but we've got 10 panels on the roof all nice and shiny and sealed up. I thank you guys for watching. We are going to be at Alex. I've just confirmed it because Trade5 asked me to be on their stand at Alex. So if you guys fancy coming over and saying hi, I'll be there on Thursday, the 29th of February at Alex. I'd love to see you guys there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all your support. Stay tuned for this in-depth Give Energy All-in-One video and a lot more interesting content to come this year. See you soon.